Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today I'm going to be working on some easy DIY scrap wood projects. If you want a few more ideas, I will link them in my description box and in the comment section below. This first project that I'm going to be working on is a birdhouse and this was recommended by a few of my subscriber friends. So if you have any scrap wood projects or any kind of DIY ideas that you would like to see on my channel coming up, then feel free to leave them in the comment section. I love getting ideas from you guys. So first I am starting off with my husband's help. We are cutting the pieces that we need for the sides of the birdhouse and I will be putting um, our measurements in the description box and probably up here in the corner up here in a second. Ours are pretty specific to birds in our area. I picked the, I think it's called a house wren. Um, be sure to look up the birds in your area if you're going to be making your own birdhouse and pick the birds that you want to use your birdhouse because um, the sizes of the birdhouses and um, like the, the size of the hole all depends on what kind of bird you want to attract because we have one um, that we made a few years ago out in our yard and we have the smaller birds going in there and then as the summer goes on we see the bigger birds coming and trying to take over the house and pulling their nest out and stuff so you want to be sure that you are making the correct size <laughs> so here we're cutting the sides of the house that have the peaks And my husband's just using the first one that he cut as a guide. And I just wanted to cut that a little bit shorter so that um, the saw went all the way through on our next cut. And if you don't have a saw like this, you can um, definitely use a hand saw. It just will take a little bit more elbow grease. <laughs> And if you're a little in intimidated by power tools, just start small and get like the, um, you know, the smaller tools, maybe like drills, screwdrivers, that kind of thing until you get used to those and then like work your way up. I know a lot of you have asked, a lot of mine are um, from either thrift stores or garage sales or, um, you know, were given to us as gifts by our parents or whatever, but there's definitely cheaper ways to get them than brand new. And then here we're just marking off the size of the roof. You don't have to have um, a hangover. I wanted mine to hang over a little bit just to protect the hole from um, the rain. And because we don't want to worry about trying to figure out angles and stuff for the cuts, we're just making one side of the roof a little bit larger than the other. You can just hold that. Yeah, but I like hearing that from people. And then that way they overlap each other on the top to make the peak. So in total you're going to need seven pieces. You're going to need these as the side piece, this as the bottom, also these as the bigger front and back of your birdhouse, and then this is for the top, the peak of the house. And then here I'm just pre-drilling the holes before I put the screws in because it's a little bit difficult to just screw right into the end grain of wood and get it to go the right direction that you want it to. <laughs> So this is the drill that I'm using and I used wood glue as well just as another way to secure it. And then I love this screwdriver, it makes the job so much easier. You just turn it in the direction that you want the screw to go and then it goes all by itself. And I just did that all the way around the birdhouse putting four screws on each side of the front and back and then also on the bottom I did the same thing pre-drilled the holes added some wood glue and then I'm going to screw on the bottom okay. 
These are what I'm going to be using on top of the roof. And it says rot resistant, lit resistant. So I'm still going to paint them once they're on the roof, but I thought these would look really cute. I'm going to actually paint these white and the house white, and then I'll probably leave the shims the wood color because I think that'll be super cute. So I'm going to go spray this after I give it a little bit of sanding, not much because it's going to be just like a cute little rustic birdhouse. I ended up doing two coats of paint. I'm using this spray paint first. It took a little bit longer to dry than I wanted it to, but it was so cold outside. I've been trying to hold off on using spray paint because it's still somewhat winter temperatures around here. So this is what it looks like after the spray paint. I'm just doing a coat of just like the brush on paint. Probably exterior would be the best, but so as you can see, the wood I'm using is really um, weathered. So I just wanted to give it a couple good coats of paint just to seal it as much as I can. I could probably do a sealer over it because I want the little birdies to stay nice and dry. And the same with the roof pieces. Um, I know that's going to be covered with the shims, but I just want to make sure it's got a nice coat as well. And then I'm just taking the shims and I'm going to cut them down to the size I want. You can do two or three layers. I chose to do two, mostly out of laziness. And I ended up using this wood glue and then we put it outside, I think a little bit too early before it had dried and cured. And so the shingles started lifting because it was also raining when we put it outside. Um, so I had to go back in and use um, like a construction adhesive that I've used in previous videos. Super simple and it's holding like a champ. So with the shingles or shims, I am just layering it and adding a little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place until the wood glue dries. That may have been my problem too. I probably shouldn't have used that. Should have just used the wood glue, let it clamp it, and then let it cure for as long as it says on the directions. But I was getting antsy. <laughs> so as I put the first shim down, I just added another layer of glue on top of that one to secure the next one on top. And then I clamped them super tight to hold them in place. Do you want it about two inches or do you want it a little bit less? Probably two. Okay, so you want two inches down this side and then two back. So we're going to cut four inches off and fold it. And then I thought it would be cute to add a little metal piece. I wanted copper, but I thought this metal would look fine too. Um, on top, just on the very tip top. Another way to keep the water from getting in. Um, my husband helped me on this because I don't like working with these pieces of metal. So he just measured as big as we wanted the metal piece to be on the top and then measured halfway and then put a crease in it to put over the roof. And I was just looking for really long nails here. <laughs> and then same process, just used a little bit of wood glue and then drilled some holes before we put the nails in. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is where we made one of the wood pieces on the roof longer than the other, just so we didn't have to cut the angle. And then here we're just attaching the metal piece. And then according to the directions that I found for the type bird we're making this birdhouse for, they were very specific on where to put the hole and what size the hole was. I believe we used um, an inch. And like I said, I will put the sizes we used in the description box. And then <laughs> it was sprinkling as we were putting this up. So it was a little bit difficult and it didn't end up straight on the tree but that's fine <laughs> and then my husband after he attached it to the tree went ahead and attached the roof for me 
And I think it's so cute. I just need to add a little bit of paint underneath the roof because you can kind of see where the brown wood is poking through. So let me know what you think of that one. For the next one, I am using this block of wood that I have used in the past in two of these projects in this video. I will link that in the comment section below. But I'm just using that same tool that we use to put the hole in the birdhouse to put a hole into this block of wood. And this is going to be a cute little like succulent holder or um, you know, faux plant holder. Super simple. You could even just use it like this. I made it a little bit deeper but just because I wanted to be able to put flowers with longer stems on it. You could leave this wood, you could paint cute little shapes or use your stencils, but I thought it'd be cool to do like just like a like a triangle of black or something like geometric type shapes. So I'm just taking some paint. I didn't have any painter's tape, so I'm using this and marking off where I wanted my triangle to be and then painting it on. I think these would be super cute if you had a few of them and then you could do like solid color ones, like bright ones for summer or, you know, different shapes. I think that would be really pretty or painted white. But I am just doing the triangles on a few sides of the block. Let me know what your favorite type of scrap wood project is. I have a ton of ideas, but I don't know what you guys want to see. So it would be awesome if you could leave me um, some of your ideas in the comment section. And if you're new here, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you like what you see and consider subscribing. We'd love for you to join our YouTube family. And this is it all finished. I think it's really pretty. You can use it for, like I said, the plant stems or succulents. So for our next scrap wood project, you can use pieces like this. I'm going to keep the angle because I think that would be kind of cool looking. Um, you can use pieces like this, whether you put them this way or this way. And I will show you how I'm going to make cute little um, photo holders. Starting out, I'm, I know I want these together. I don't know, you could put them like this so they have the slants going this way. These are scrap pieces obviously. But I'm going to put them this way, kind of cool. So I'm going to glue them and let it dry while I'm working on the other piece. And I need to get a clamp. And I'm just going to set that aside while we work on the other one. And then this one, I think I'm going to, maybe I'll end up putting it like this. Um, but I'm just going to sand down the edges since they're a little bit rough. Don't mind the Christmas plate. I just added a little bit of water and some brown paint. This is going to be my faux stain. And I'm just using this sponge. I made it a little bit damp. And again, like I said in other videos, you can go ahead and use regular stain, but sometimes I don't want the house to be <laughs> stinky and it's too cold to do it outside right now. Okay, so I'm going to use these because I think they're going to be super cute. You can go ahead and tape it down, you know, to keep it from sliding and stuff if you want. But I prefer, I've said this in many videos, I prefer using a um, sponge or a sponge brush when doing stencils only because I feel like when I and this is just me. <laughs> when I use a brush, the paint gets under the stencil more. I'm not sure if that's the same for everybody, but I know that's why I do it this way. I like this color, but I don't think it stands out enough on the darker wood. I think that is really cute. All right, I lied. I think instead of doing it this way, because that's the way I'm going to do the other one, I'm going to do it this way just so you can see it both ways. 
And then I'm taking my little dowel rod. If you're going out to buy some, I would get one that's a little bit bigger than this one. This one was all I had, but it'll work. So I'm just gonna show you how to attach it. And I'm just using the drill and using a bit that is about the same size as the dowel rod. And I'm gonna do two. You could, you could do one just in the center if you had um, one that was probably a little bit thicker, but I'm going to do two just because mine's smaller. And you don't want to go all the way through, you just want it just part way through so you can put the dowel rod in there with some glue. Hopefully it fits. Might need to go up one, one size bigger. Yep, that'll fit perfectly and I'm just going to add some glue. I'm going to do the other side first and you'll want to measure to make sure they are at the same distance from the very bottom of your board. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut my dowel rod. And then I'm going to fill these holes with a little bit of wood glue. And then I'm going to let them dry. And for this one, I'm going to use this stencil and I'm gonna use this paint. I was gonna use black, but I don't know how that would look with some of the pictures I want to put on here. It's a little bit crooked, but that's okay. I am going to be sanding it, the edges after I do the stencil, mostly because I forgot to do it before. Then I'm just going to add some white on the sides and you can decorate these however you want, however it fits your own home decor. Adding a little bit of the white paint on the edges. Okay, and then for this one, I'm just going to do it on the sides as well, because if I drill in there, I don't know if it'll split my boards. So I'm having to cut mine shorter um, because it's not sitting back far enough. There we go. Before it was just making it sit up like this. And the shorter you cut it, probably the more it'll lean back. But I'm happy with that. For this one, I'm going to use this little metal clip or you could use the clothespins like I showed you in the beginning. And you can, instead of hot glue, which is what I'm doing now just for doing it quickly, um, you could go ahead and add a little um, nail to it or something like through here so that it's a little bit more permanent. And you'd obviously put in like a bigger picture or um, put two clips here so you could have two pictures, but this is what I had already printed. So. so it's just so you can see. And then this one is the same. I'm trimming off some of the, some of the dowel. Yeah, and then it, that way it sits at more of an angle. And then for this one, I'm going to use one of these little itty bitty Close pins, I would suggest one that's just a little bit bigger, but I didn't have any, so this is what I'm using. And this one is one I already had on hand as well. That's why it's so big, but you would obviously put in pictures that fit the right size. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for stopping by. Don't forget to pop into the comments and say hi and leave me your video ideas. Let me know what you've been up to lately. Thanks so much. Sending you love and hugs and I'll see you next time. Bye!